What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those you are maybe new to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there if you want a few recommendations of what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year so in today's episode of who to sign for guys we're going to take a look at the Italian Giants and the current Serie A champions Inter Milan Internationale Inter Inter Milan, however you refer to them, they're the Italian Giants managed by Simone Inzaghi, brother of Filippo, and they are such a class team to do a FIFA career mode with, and there are many reasons why, which I'll get to in a moment. Now, Inter Milan are a four and a half star team with starting transfer budget after wage budget operation of around 95 to 98 million pounds. And in the first season, their objectives are very simple. Win the domestic double like they're going for in real life. Tonight, they take on Juventus in the Coppa Italia final, and they're currently two points beyond their great rivals, AC Milan, in the race for the Serie A title, aiming to retain it and in the Champions League that's a very tough objective reached a final last year of course knocked out by the current finalists Liverpool so Inter Milan a four and a half star team an iconic old team with an iconic ground in the San Siro wonderful kits and they are the real kits in the game as well it's a really fun team but they're also a team that need a rebuild. Yep, great team to do a FIFA career move. So if you're looking for a European giant with a really strong rivalry, one of the fierce, fiercest rivalries in European football with their Milano rivals, AC, this is a brilliant team to do a rebuild work. So I'll show you the team here, a four and a half star side. Now there are a couple of fantastic young talents in their early to mid 20s. None better than the centre back, Alessandro Bastoni, and also through the middle, Nicolo Barella as well. Plus, of course, they've got the deadly Argentine striker, Lautaro Martinez, who is just 23 as well. It's a really, really good mix of decent young talent, but also seniors that need to be shipped on as well. You'll see several players have their deals that come the end of the year, and some noteworthy players too, such as per uh, Perisic, Arturo Vidal, and of course the captain, Handanovic too. I'd sell everyone. Yep, in the first season, I'd sell everyone, put them all on the transfer list. Handanovic, Vidal, Ranocchia, who's been there for over a decade, Perisic, Sanchez, uh, Vicino, and also De Ambrosio as well. I'd sell them all. Yep, they're all in their 30s, apart from the Uruguayan midfielder Vicino, who is 29 years old. I'd sell them all in the very first season. And this is why Inter are such a class team to do a FIFA crew this year. They're a four and a half star team, so they're not the very best they can be despite the abundance of quality they clearly have they've got very strong objectives being asked to win a domestic double which they're going for in real life chasing their rivals AC for the title aiming to retain it and of course tonight in the Coppa Italia final against Juventus as well asked to reach the Champions League final very tough objectives in season one so if you're looking for a challenge these guys are definitely one to use and again because of the rebuild required to it's such a fun project to undertake as well so many aging players to sell in the very first season with a decent starting budget as well once you raise it by selling some of these players in their 30s too you got a really decent amount of cash to play with as you're going to rebuild this into Milan side and make it younger as well so as I mentioned there, uh, I'll put all those players on the transfer list of their deals that come the end of the year. And while some of them still have very key play, uh, key roles to play in the very first season, including the captain hand down it between the sticks, no room for sentimental reasons here. No, you've got to start the rebuild as soon as possible with Inter Milan. You want to build for the future, try and turn it from a four and a half star team to a five star team as quick as you can. Inter Milan are the perfect European giant for a challenge, for a rebuild, and a bit of an RTG as well, a sort of a, a free 
season to four season project, I'd say, this team. Uh, so we saw Vecino. Uh, you'd see the deals for uh, Ambrosio and Ranocchio both fell through, though we did accept a bid here for Perisic from Chelsea. Uh, Handanovic's move to Espanyol fell through, though we did sell Arturo Vidal uh, to Roma for £10.5 million, pounds, the veteran Chilean midfielder. And speaking of Chilean players here, uh, we had a bid for Alexis Sanchez from Athletic Mineiro, uh, the Brazilian side. This one, uh, as you'll see in a moment's time, did eventually fall through, but you'll be very interested to see who I ended up selling Alexis Sanchez for in this save. It was very, very interesting. I can't wait to show you. But even so, for new signings with Inter Milan, again, you start off with a budget of around 95 to 100 million pounds, so a decent amount of money to play with in the very first season, a very good budget. Who would I look to buy for this Inter Milan side? What positions would I look to strengthen? Well, I would say personally, the very first position to look at is the center of midfield. Now, of course, you've got the star, Nicola Barella, Brozovic playing a little bit deeper in the DM role, and Hakan Shalanolu is really solid as well. But you're going to sell Vidal, you're going to sell Vecino, you're going to want to make sure you've got someone decent right now and also can get better for the future. Bonus points if he's Italian, there was only one name I'd consider bringing him. It's this guy right here, Lorenzo Pellegrini of Roma. This guy is an amazing jack of all trades type of player in FIFA career mode. And he'd fit this into Milan side like an absolute glove. He's a team player that really can do anything. There's very, very little negative to this guy. He's good at practically every single thing. And I will put him right in the first team alongside Barela. Barela as the playmaker, Brozovic as the anchor man, and Pellegrini as the box to box. Now he starts off as an attacking midfielder, but as you would have seen by his list of positions, he's got all three CAM, CM, and CDM. The guy can do all three. Personally, he's probably a little bit better going forward than he is sitting deeper, but what I would do is change his position from CAM to CM. It'll only take two weeks to do it because he's got a good enough range of stats to be a natural central midfielder. And once you've done that, he'll be able to slide inside alongside Barela uh, with Brozovic sitting deeper than a pair as well. And that right there as a CM midfield trio is absolutely perfect. They've all got their roles already guaranteed and already sorted out. Barela is the playmaker that goes a little bit further forward. Pellegrini as the box to box that does everything. And Brozovic who sits deeper as the anchor man. That right there is a brilliant Inter Milan midfield trio. Um, we also signed Luis Felipe from Lazio. I really recommend this guy as as well because his contract's up coming at the end of the year which means you normally can get him for under the valuation. Unfortunately in this save I spent quite a bit over the valuation plus added in Renocchia the aging centre half as well. The reason why is because I waited too long to bring him in. By the time I put in a transfer offer he'd already signed a new contract so normally you can get him for cheaper than what I paid. I paid uh, close to 30 mil plus Renocchia as well but if you do it quick enough you should be able to get him for around 20 million, 10 million less. So I ended up paying a little bit more than I should have to do so because I waited a little bit too long. But if you sign him quick enough, then you can get him for under the valuation. He's a class center after. Uh, Brazilian-born, Italian international, I believe. Starts off 79 overall, and he's got 84 potential as well. As a squad center half for this Inter Milan side, they play a back three. He'd be really solid to replace Ranocchia and De Ambrosio as well. Now, the third player I recommend signing for Inter Milan is a new left-sided player. Now, of course, we just sold Perisic to Chelsea, and this guy would be a superb fit. Now, I have two names on the shortlist, Jose Gaia and Alejandro Grimaldo. And what you might notice is that they're both left backs, not actually left midfielders, because uh, Inter Milan play a 3-5-2. So the wide midfielders need to be good both on the defensive end and on the offensive end and have good stamina as well. Jose Gaia and Alejandro Grimaldo, the two Spanish fullbacks, they can both play further forward or deeper in a defensive role as well. So really, they're ideal fits for Inter's 3-5-2. Now, of course, you've got Goosens, who's currently online from Atalanta, but he's only going to be there for the year. You've got the youngster DeMarco as well. He's not quite good enough to be a first-team starter. You're going to want someone to replace Goosens once he goes back to Atalanta after his loan spell. And Jose Guy is a really good fit. I picked him up for a decent deal. Uh, you'll see that it'll take around 34 weeks for him to become a left midfielder if he changed position there, but only two weeks to become a left wing back. What I would personally do is because Denzel Dumfries, who's just been signed, a Dutch right-sided 
solid player. He's also a little bit better, sitting deeper as well. What I would personally do is keep the 3-5-2, but drop Jose Gaia and Denzel Dumfries down to wing backs as opposed to wide midfielders. Now, they'll still be pushed up far enough to get forward on the offensive end, but they'll be able to provide more defensive cover for the back three of Bastoni, DeVray, and also Skriniar as well. And it'll also get rid of the exclamation marks on their names, which represents a temporary attribute decrease. So yeah, I'd, I'd phase uh, Dumfries and Gaia a little bit further deeper to wing backs. It will still technically be a 3-5-2. It's just that they're a little bit deeper than as opposed to playing further forward as wide midfielders in a 3-5-2 system, especially in this year's FIFA as well. Playing without wing backs or full backs can be very, very dangerous indeed. I'd drop them a little bit deeper. They'll still be getting further forward a lot as the only wide midfielders in the game, uh, in your team, sorry, but they'll also be a little bit more defense minded as well. So we sold Handanovic uh, to Fiorentina, as you can see, and I found this really interesting indeed. I said, wait to see where Alexis Sanchez goes in this save. Ah, oh, wouldn't this be so cool? Wouldn't you love to see it? We see players return to the places they were loved by the fans for many, many years, quite often nowadays. Alexis Sanchez going back to Arsenal. Would the Gunners fans want him back? I think so. Oh, I think so. Playing alongside and now under Mikel Arteta. I think so. So, yeah, we sold Sanchez uh, to Arsenal with 20 million in the end. And after we sold Handanovic to Fiorentina as well, he is the club captain of Inter Milan. But as Inter Milan fans will tell you, his time at the San Siro is definitely coming to an end. He's in his mid to late 30s. He's going to decline rapidly in the very first season. You're going to want someone to replace him long term. And he's been heavily linked to Inter Milan in real life. So it's quite a realistic signing. I'd recommend bringing in a Cameroonian shot stopper. Andre Onana. Now, the reason why Onana fits into Milan like a glove is very simple. Not only has he been linked to Inter Milan quite heavily in real life as well, but he's out of contract at the end of the season with Ajax, which means you can get him for slightly under the valuation. I think we spent 23 million to get him. He's 25 years old, which means he's not even in the prime of his career right now, and he's 82 overall. And you might sit there and think, well, hang on a minute, he's three ratings lower than Handanovic, and you spent a lot more money to replace him with Andre Onana. Why would you do that? Well, the reason being is very simple. Handanovic in the first season at 37 years old is going to plummet quickly. He'll be down to around 81, 82 overall come the end of the season. Andre Onana is going to be higher rated than Handanovic in just a few months' time. Yep, it's all about the long-term project with Inter Milan. And Onana being over 10 years younger is the perfect fit as Inter's new number one. So we signed Andre Onana. He comes in from Ajax there. And for around 23 mil, he's been heavily linked in real life it's a really really good replacement for Handanovic and quite a cheap one as well but under 30 million so uh, following that Sanchez did go back to the Emirates Stadium he's off to Arsenal I love that there for 20 million and uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini's position change was completed as well like I mentioned it would only take him two weeks to become a CM in this team and with so much green in his stats you know very very little yellow as well he really is the perfect box to box in this team and as we completed Gaia's position change as well from left back to left wing back you'll see he grew a rating to 84 overall because he's very good when going forward. I'll give him the defensive wing-back development plan that will get his defensive work credit from medium to high, which is very, very crucial in this Inter Milan side because you're playing with no registered fullbacks. Your wide side pairing of Gaia and Dumfries are going to have to do everything, you know, bomb up the pitch and also track back as quick as they can as well. So having defensive work rates being high, same with the attacking work rates being high on both of those players is really, really important. So yeah, going out to 84 overall with that little position change there, he's such a great fit for this Inter Milan side. Um, so you had a little bit of money left over with Inter Milan. I did decide to sign this guy, uh, David Fratesi of Sassuolo. Sassuolo got some really good young Italian talent. Of course, they just sold Locatelli uh, to Juventus. But they've got Fratesi, uh, the young central midfielder who we signed from Tassuolo for a small transfer fee, uh, plus the Ambrosio, the centre-half who we were trying to sell but just couldn't get a bid for. Uh, they've got Sk uh, Skamaka, uh, the young striker, Raspadori, who's one of the best young strikers in the game as well. If you're doing an Italian career mode, raid Sassuolo. They've got some amazing young Italian talent, including this guy, uh, Fratesi. 75 overall, really decent playmaker, I'd say. Very good passing stats and very comfortable on the ball with 82 ball 
ball control as well. So a solid squad central midfielder to have there. And after season ticket money came in, we had just shy of £40 million to work with, with a week to go before the season would start. I did decide to bring in a couple more players, including another Sassuolo youngster. I really wanted Raspadori, but unfortunately he'd moved on in the save to Eintracht Frankfurt. So in the end, I got the other young Italian Sassuolo striker, Gianluca Lucas Scamacca. This guy learning under Edin Dzeko would be perfect as well, because he's a real good target man. Six foot five, 22 years old, 79 overall already. Now, I was a little bit lucky with the transfer here. Normally, you're paying upwards of around 30 to 32 and a half million pounds for him. I didn't even need to break the bank of 30 mil. I got him for 27.5 mil. That's very lucky. You're probably going to have to pay around 30 to 33 mil for the guy, but he's worth every penny. 79 overall and in his early 20s at 22. He's got 84 potential and again, He's a great target man, six foot five. Jeko, great target man at six foot four. The Bosnian striker, learning under him, that's absolutely perfect. Your long term success of Redding Jeko is a similar mould of player. Gianluca Scamacca, great young Italian talent. And again, if you're doing an Italian career mode this year, Raid Sassuolo. If you're not starting with Sassuolo, raid them. Get all of their youngsters. They've got so many great ones in the game, including this guy as well. 86 strength, 83 jumping, 6 foot 5, 80 finishing, 80 attack position. The perfect target man in this team. And your long-term success for Fred Dzeko and your long-term partner for Lautaro Martinez. One of the final signings I pulled off was this guy right here, uh, Nicolo Casale from Hellas Verona. Obviously, we gave uh, Ranocchia and D'Ambrosio away for free. We uh, obviously did sign Luis Felipe, but we had no squad centre-half in the reserves. You only had four centre-halves. Of course, it's Inter start with three centre-halves in their first 11. You want a squad centre-half to fill in for cover. This guy's a really cheap option, Casale. Uh, 23 years old. Uh, not the highest rated to begin with. You probably won't use him much in the first couple of seasons, but he's got 81 potential. So will grow into a really good squad center half for all the years you're at the San Siro. Again, in his early 20s right now, so still has a lot of room to grow. Medium high work rates and very good defensive stats. He's an old school center half here. He's very physical, good strength, good aggression, decent jumper at six foot three as well, and solid defensive stats to begin with. He'll just be in your resis. You won't use him much, but he's there and uh, definitely worth picking up, I would say, for the squad for cover. The final thing I did with the little bit of money remaining was record a couple of players out on loan right now. Inter got loads of players loaned out and there's a couple I'd recall because they can both play roles in the first team in the first season you got Stefano Sensai and also Valentino Lazaro who's currently at Benfica. Uh, Sensai is an 80 rated central midfielder so he'll provide good cover and Lazaro is a right mid, can also play full back slash wing back as well so ideal for this Inter system. At 77 rated he's more than good enough to fill in for squad depth I'd recall them both, it'll cost you a small amount of money and I'll bring them both back. So in the end with Inter Milan, in a very busy transfer window we sold five players for 64.7 mil and signed seven players for just over 191 million it was a big net loss of over 126 and a half mil but when you look at the players that came in Pellegrini going right in the first 11 with 87 potential. Gaia going right in the first 11 with 86 potential. Onana going right in the first 11 with 85 potential. And then when you look at filling out the squad here, Skamaka with 84 potential, Fratesi with 84, Luis Felipe with 84, and Gonzalo with 81 as well. Some great young Italian talent coming in, improving our first team and the bench in the reserves as well. It's a great team to do a rebuild with. I really enjoyed rebuilding this Inter side. So as per usual, we would simulate to the end of the season, see how Inter Milan would get on and see if we could hit those very tough objectives. Well, as you could see, there was a Champions League final against Bayern Munich. Talk about deja vu. Could we beat them once again in the CL final? The answer was no. Lost it by four goals to three. Bayern got their revenge after all those years went into beating them by two goals to nil. Well over a decade ago now. And in the end, as you'll see, it actually turned out to be quite a disappointing season for Inter Milan. Yep, we lost our title. We won it last year. I should say Inter won it last year but in the save, asked to retain it. Well, we ended up finishing a whopping 13 points behind the eventual winners, Napoli. Yep, we finished in fourth, so qualify for the Champions League. That's the saving grace, but I'll be honest here. That's a really disappointing Serie A season. They might not retain it this year. AC Milan, at the time of recording this commentary, have a two-point gap with two games to go. But 
Even so, to finish 13 points behind in fourth, that's quite disappointing. And whilst we did win the Super Copper, which doesn't count towards the objectives, but I thought I'd show you it anyway, domestically in the cup as well, well, Napoli, as you'll see, ended up winning a domestic double. They beat us in the semis on penalties and then won the final as well. So a domestic double for Napoli, I guess the only saving grace really was knowing we had a memorable season in Europe, going all the way to the Champions League final, including knocking out Liverpool and Barcelona on the way, only to lose to Bayern in a seven-goal thriller. So technically, we hit our European objective, but failed both of our domestic ones. Yep, asked to win a domestic double. We won neither. 13 points behind Napoli in the race for the Serie A title and couldn't reach the Coppa Italia final either. Yes, we reached the Champions League final, but I'm not going to dress it up any other way. That's a pretty disappointing first season in my book. But the reason why I wasn't too concerned about it is quite simple. This Inter Milan side needs a rebuild. This Inter Milan side needs a major change for the future, because for now, they're really good. But for the future, they've got a lot of aging players that are going to decline really, really quickly. Your Arturo Vidal's, your Kolarov's, who's retiring at the end of the season for us in this save. You know, your... Pandanovic, the captain, the goalkeeper as well. It needs a big rebuild. And Inter Milan are a European giant. But what I love about them is they're not a team where you're expected to win everything in the first season and then call it a day after one year. They're a three or four season project. And the first season, whilst I do would whilst I would say you should aim to win at least, at the very least, one trophy. Technically, we did with a Super Copper, but you know I'm not going to count it. It's all about laying down the groundwork in the first season. You know, replacing those aging players like we did. Pellegrini replacing Vidal. Gaia replacing uh, Perisic. Uh, Onana replacing Handanovic. Skamaka replacing Sanchez. It's all about replacing those aging players in the first team. Bringing in some great young Italian talent like we did as well. And laying down the groundwork. Inter Milan might be a European giant. They might be the current Serie A holders but they are still a rebuild project RTG team and if you are looking for a Serie A team that is a challenge in the first season with very tough objectives but a good starting budget a very very decent side but it does need a rebuild and does need a long RTG before you can start winning Champions League again Inter Milan are the perfect team they are a brilliant side to use and I definitely recommend them for a FIFA career mode this year I had so much fun with these guys rebuilding the side but that will end today's episode of you to sign for guys big thank you fortune hope you have enjoyed it if you had not please drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon